Hi, Mr. Kellogg. Hello, oh, Mr. Moore. How are you? Excellent. How are you? Good. Want to start the show? Might as well. I turned it on, Barry. Oh, we're already rolling. Roll? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Awesome. You're ahead of the game. Really? Time will tell. Call this December 4th Gardner Electric Advisory Board meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we will take any comments from the public. Seeing no movement, we'll move right along to the consent agenda. So moved. Second. second. There's been a motion and a second for the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? New business item number one, review the proposed utility advisory commission ordinance. Uh, good evening. Uh, we've attached it's a red line version of this uh, document, uh, which was the uh, amending the document that uh, created the 
Electric Utility Advisory Board, which is convert changing the name to Electric, excuse me, to Utility Advisory Commission and expanding the scope to include uh, water and wastewater. Uh, one thing to note, uh, I know the uh, council is very desirous of you all uh, basically staying on board and uh, mainly changing your names. Your terms would remain the same. And so once this is adopted on the 15th, uh, you will cease to be the Electric Utility Board and will become the Utility, Utility Advisory Commission. Has everybody had a chance to read through this or? Yes. What discussion do we have? I've got a couple of quick comments that we can kind of go through. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. On uh, the first page, section 2A, number of commission members. The commission shall consist of five members hereafter referred to as members. Based on the desired um, outcomes of the council, which I think most of us heard the other night, and the addition of the other utilities, i.e. the water and wastewater, I'm just wondering if this group shouldn't expand in members based on that additional oversight and allow us to have some wastewater and water content experts maybe to be tapped in order to support that extra ripple as most of us sitting up here are more electric minded and that would that would be my question so maybe it would expand to six or eight people but I've got an opinion on that but I right. do is where, where where do you I I uh, my opinion on, on it is um, I'm disappointed uh, that we're not uh, we're 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 back to what we're doing here as electric utility advisory board, which is a lot of, I don't know what exactly. And um, we, yeah, we make recommendations um, and then we have to sit and wait to see if the recommendations were even heeded or anybody paid any attention to them at all. Um, I was looking through this and highlighting um, the uh, re responsibilities of this commission and I'm not seeing a whole lot um, I'm not seeing a whole lot other than what we currently do so I personally don't feel like adding water and wastewater would be overly burdensome given uh, that our only you know our only responsibilities are to make some recommendations and to um, do the do the business of uh, administering the board itself, which is a big part of our job now, is to elect the president, and vice president of the board. And so that's that's my opinion on it. I don't I don't see that adding water and wastewater is going to add a whole lot to our. Uh, no, I, I don't either. Okay, so. I actually talked to the city administrator about this, uh, specifically adding more people. And the from the responsibility side, I'm, I'm in agreement with Lee, uh, that since we're sitting at such a high level at this point, we don't have to have those content experts necessarily to come on. Obviously, it's nice to have you know, more content experts. but as the rest of the hierarchy gets filled out, that's going to be that utility director or, well, whatever the official title is. So, um, and then just pulling from electric and public works people. So those people will be in that this meeting. Um, and then if you think about the council, you know, it, it's five plus the mayor. We've got five now. If we went to an odd number, seven or nine, well now we're bigger than the council and we don't even have any real duties, authoritative power duties, right? So then 
not that we get off into the weeds too often because you know we don't we're, we actually don't have a decision that's binding but too many cooks in the kitchen could be a possibility there so I think leaving it at five is great plus we don't have to worry about trying to rush through putting new people on the board um, so that's where I'm at and I, I would agree, my comment was really based on, um, you know, we asked the council to be solvent and show partnership through other organi organizations and or community organizations. And so I just, I don't want to be uh, pickled into that same category by not putting it out there that there's a potential need for one or two members on this. UAC board. Whether it comes to fruition or not, um, that's, a, that's a consensus thing, right? Now, going back to what Lee said, and, and we've actually talked about this before Lee's time and during David's time when he was on staff, when Krawcheck was here and, and you know, the game. <clears throat> before that ordinance was updated, and I'm being positive here when I say updated, there was, that ordinance allowed this body to bind the city to purchases, contracts, et cetera. I recognize that. But the ordinance that's in front of us and that we have to work within those parameters, it's really our responsibility to recommend, to forecast, and to be proactive with our planning so that we can say to the council via David, hey, we need to buy a half a ton of copper wire, or we need to, uh, through eminent domain, go out and get some land, or we need to look at our equipment that these gentlemen are working in because of a safety issue or mileage or we're putting more money into it than it's worth. You know, I think if we can kind of, to your point, Mark, get ourselves out of the weeds and stay at this high level, and promote the recommendations, the forecasting, and this proactive planning, I think it behooves the council to, to take note of that. And I think we have some partners on the council, uh, and I might be bold to say this, but even the mayor that should take this feedback and be able to utilize it, now time will tell, but be able to utilize that um, and make informed decisions based on this body's recommendation. But if we just sit up here, we don't make recommendations, we're not looking, you know, six months, one year, two years, three years down the road, then what, what are we up here for? So I think it behooves us to take that stance. And if that ball, that baton is passed off to council, our elected officials, and they do nothing with it, then that's their bucket of water, not ours. Well, as, as far as partnering on the council, that may change, I guess is the word. Elections have because that Because we do have an election coming up, and at least two people on this board are running. So we may have more partnership there. Um, that also may shake up who's on the board. Sure. Since that, you know, I'm not terribly worried if we have new people coming on. Neither am I. So... Uh, I think everything you said it makes sense. We're we're in that situation where the best we can do is make a responsible decision that is leading us forward. Um, the biggest problem we have right now is that we're not really doing that forward thinking. We've been in this holding pattern for a year. Whether or not we're going to exist, not exist what powers we have, don't have. Well, I think today's the tipping point then, right? Well, yes and no. Sure, we move to having more duties as far as you know what we're gonna look at, but the real tipping point, I think, will be when the rest of the hierarchy come up. Fair enough. Until we have that electric director, that utility director, I think council and, and city admin, I could be wrong here, are kind of holding back on if we went to them with, here's our forecast for plans for the next five years, it's, well, don't go too far off with what you're thinking because then new guy's gonna show up and say, 
scrap all of that. That's not how we're running this show. So I think we're still somewhat in that holding pattern, which is frustrating. Um, I concur. And hopefully that can get resolved sooner than later. And then we can move forward uh, as this utility advisory commission. Fair enough. What else? On uh, section two, C is in Charlie. Vacancies. Vacan vacancies shall be filled out by the mayor with the approval of council for the unexpired term. No vacancies on the commission shall impair the right of the remaining members to exercise all the powers of the commission. As a courtesy, I would bring up that our recommendation, if there is consensus, that that new member should be um, a part of some sort of interaction with this commission. So if the mayor wants to appoint John Doe or Susie Q, there should be some sort of interaction with respect to that appointment on behalf of this body, as a courtesy. I recommended when they changed the appointment process and adopted it, that if it's some sort of a board, whether it be our board, the uh, airport commission, fill in the blank. Planning commission. Planning commission, that someone from that commission is in the interview process with this council member and the mayor or whoever they have chosen to do that. That hasn't happened yet. Um, hopefully, you know, I mean, we haven't really had any full vacancies. Um, so hopefully that might be something that we can test here soon and there can be a little bit more interaction back and forth there, so that'd be great. Well, again, and that, that's, I think that behooves us to make the rec recommendation to Mr. Green to take it back to council. Would you? Would you agree? Yeah, pretty simple. I know they asked me to relay to I know Jeannie, the city clerk, wanted to know what your comments were. Sure. Uh, we'll do our uh, Cindy, make sure that happens. I'm, I'm unfortunately leaving town, unfortunately, uh, when the case may be tomorrow, but uh, uh, we'll make sure that what your comments are relayed to. And I'm sure Jeannie will be watching the uh, video also. So your comments will be noted. The last item that I had a question or wanted to make a comment is section three, Diaz and Dog. Economic development incentives. The city council may also develop and implement economic development incentives. The commission may recommend to city council economic development incentives. And I'm not a great historian, but under the original ordinance that ran for about four and a half, five years, based on a need of five years prior. The, this board actually had, albeit a small dollar figure, an economic development rider, if I'm not mistaken, that would piggyback or uh, I think in the eyes of this commission at that point in time would be just that an incentive for a commercial entity to come to town. Um, Again, I go back to what I said earlier. I think we need to recommend, forecast, and proactively plan, you know, for big, big items. And I think economic development is an important function of this of this commission. Although we don't have binding authority, and nor do we have the dollars to leverage, I think it's incumbent upon us to be able to put together a package that city council would be able to add to or, you know, work with. So, um, and based on the water and wastewater, you know, sounds like we've got, to Lee's point, just more responsibility, but I think we can use that to our benefit versus seeing it as a, you know, another rider in a single man saddle. Right, it, going forward, I would assume that it wouldn't, the electric rider would be modified to be a utility rider um, because it, it's going to be a package deal regardless. Even if somebody, it, the tipping point is electric, or the tipping point was water, the they're coming for the entire package. So I assume that that will be revisited after more of the comprehensive plan mm -hmm. has been 
digested. Um, but that, yeah, that's something we'll have to actively work on with them because right now, since we've been in the folding pattern, we we haven't shared with them anything. Well, uh, and I think we need to get ourselves out of this holding pattern mindset and go ahead and you know try to put some meat on the hook, if you will, and and put the ball back in their court. Well, one of the things we could do with that is something that they're not probably going to be thinking about. So. In the past, we've purchased Correct. the customers back. Right. That's not something city council is probably thinking of when they're laying out their, their CIP right. and, hey, we're going to do this, and this land over here is going to do that. Right. Oh, we already have this other section over here that we could buy these people. Correct. So that's one area that we could definitely revisit and look at again and make a recommendation. You know, here's the prioritized list <coughs> of which customers we think would have the best ROI. Um, and, and I think that would be in uh, in concert with whatever they're doing. They could roll that in you know, seamlessly, hopefully. Um, I mean, obviously it's dollars, but it's not, it's not gonna take a whole lot out of discussion on CIP to do those kind of things. Well, and speaking of CIP, that was my last comment, and I appreciate the segue. I, I really think we need to be looking and we have a resident expert on the panel today, Mr. Moore, we, we, we really need to look at the CIP from an electrical and wastewater perspective and as a body, find consensus and push that back to the city council with recommendations, uh, get in the weeds on our behalf to think of things that they don't realize or understand in order to bring some validity to some of the things that are documented in the current CIP. Right. You know, those are the, meat and potato things that I think we need to be discussing on this on this commission versus you know right. holding our head you know in the clouds of while on this you know holding pattern you know I really think there's some room there for us to be able to wiggle around and show some uh, added value despite the fact we don't have any binding or financial leverage right we we had the CIP presented to us and now it's going through council. So at this point, we should take each of those items and make our own recommendation as to what we want to do with them. Because, you know, we gave some good feedback when we had that presented to us on how the information presented in the package was very minimal. Right. It was to the point, here's, here's what it is and here's the cost. Right. Not what that's going to do, how it's going to facilitate, where it's going to benefit in the future. So I think if we could, as you mentioned, get in the weeds on that, we could explain why some of those are in there. And then the things that are missing, we can address how those are needed or not needed or could be delayed or not delayed, so on and so forth. From an electric uh, perspective, for sure, mm -hmm. we're going to have to get up to speed on water wastewater. But sure we'll have to do that as well. Um, so I think your comments are great that we'll have to work in concert with the, the council and we're gonna have to take everything that's presented to them basically and digest it on our level. In other words, more granularly. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna have to throw it back to them because they're, they're getting a high level but they're not even getting the high level we are. They're higher. We'd like to think it is. Well, so hopefully we can provide some insight to them that hasn't been mentioned to them because you know it was down in the weeds. And again, that's the added value that this commission needs to hang their hat on sure. and drive that home. Sure. And whether the council, which are our elected officials, take action or that's not. I think our, our I, I think we're you know that provision is made in section three, subsection G planning reports, commission shall submit to city council information concerning existing or proposed long range power and water supply arrangements, capital improvement projects, and other programs that may impact on the utility. I kind of, I was, um, you know, in the whole CIP discussion, I was kind of baffled that we were never approached to help come up with the justification for the projects on you know, the electric side. And I, I hope going forward that 
that's what this means. That, you know, we'll be uh, we'll be tasked with um, you know working with with Dave or um, for Dave's replacement um, when, when whenever that person gets hired. Well, um, with coming up with justifications and asking the tough questions before it reaches the citizens and before they end up. You know, I, from what I've seen so far and the way this is written, I think it allows for us to do that, but I don't, at, currently I don't see any indication that they're going to come ask us for anything. It's going to have to be that we're proactive on providing it. Well, it says that, um, and, and I highlighted anything where it said uh, the commission shall. Correct. Uh, I did not highlight commission may because I think that's um, it's, it's just kind of filler right because um, the Commission may do a lot of different things right. um, inside or outside of this um, this ordinance but the uh, Commission shall submit so we will be on the hook as far as I, as far as I can tell from what this reads we'll have to do that and uh, uh, among other things like we have to make a recommendation uh, for rates uh, we'll have to submit a cost-benefit analysis The commission shall prepare and submit to the city council a cost benefit and feasibility now analysis of service to the area when we're making expansion, uh, doing extensions of services. So, uh, ideally, there would be a little bit more back and forth. Right now, it's throw it over the wall. Here we are. Right. Throw it back over the wall. Hope you liked it. Hope you listened to us. But. Going forward, there's going to have to be some more back and forth on not a monthly type of uh, schedule, you know, weekly or emails to, on a more frequent basis because each of these things are going to have timetables, um, fluid inf information going back and forth when we have experts that come in that we're paying consultants for. Um, and right now, we, that just doesn't happen. So I'm not really sure what's step to get us in that point again I, I think that there's still a feeling from city staff and the council that I don't want to say they don't care what we say but take it with a grain of salt because we don't have a director in here that has a vision so yeah you guys can throw out whatever good ideas you already know about but going forward we really want to have that guy, you know, uh, provide, you know, bringing stuff to us to discuss based off what he's gotten out of the meetings with city staff and, and so on and so forth. Because he's going to be privy to, you know, a public works meeting and the economic development uh, planning and, you know, everything. And that's going to come to us. But right now, we're doing nothing. And, well, I and think it's horrible because we're setting everything back and the only reason anything even got in the CIP for electric was based off recommendations from previous discussion and the and uh, our budget set for this year and some things were nixed out of it I don't know if everybody knows that yep and those were out because we don't have a director who may or may not want to do those things so I'm disappointed that we don't have those positions still because we're going to turn the corner, you're going to have the holidays, and all of a sudden it's going to be wham bam, we got to start budget process. And it, here we are, and we haven't done anything for a year to say, well, we studied rates again, and here's what we changed or found to be useful. We know that we're going to do XYZ project because we studied that, and the director had a great idea with that and he was privy to this, so now we can run with this. None of that's happened. So the fact that here we are, you know, I mean, our director left in April. We're seven months down the road and we don't have a director. I mean, you know, the ship would have crashed by now. So we're lucky that the electric staff Amen. does as good of a job as they do, and that Dave could step into this role and keep it afloat. real frustrating. Well, let me pivot off the frustration and, and 
bring us back to uh, the planning reports item in this um, in this new business action form here. You know, I, I don't know what's stopping us in writing a, recommend, a recommendation of an SOP as to how, and we've talked about this before, maybe a year or two ago, a year and a half ago, in write an SOP in, as a recommendation to city council as to how we want information and recommendations and forecasts in this proactive planning that I'm talking about to go be between commission and council via David or whoever's hired for David's spot. Well, that's the thing. Is that the way that it doesn't that matter that we don't have the pieces, though, Mark. Well, I know, but right now that is that communication. It well, is that person that doesn't exist. But that's what I'm saying. That That's a plug-and-play situation, or, or you can you can manipulate it at that point in time but right now there's no reason why we couldn't say here's how we want right we can still go through Dave right now for those things and then here's how we want that to come back to us right but versus the volume that you that want to have some about. formal documentation as to how we send an email to Dave no what I'm saying is I want and it doesn't necessarily need to be formalized but I think on behalf of the citizens it needs to be how does this commission cohabitate with city council i think that's what this document is supposed to be in a at a, at a granular level it's not as granular okay. as it could be okay we've talked about this we've talked about in the past if we make recommendations to mr green or crawcheck or his predecessor how are we to expect feedback from council right. we've talked about all this and that's what i'm saying i think now is a good time to, to begin that conversation and to create that document it doesn't need to be you know pages upon pages just maybe a one or two page deal it says okay if we send out this recommendation and we've classified them a b and c or one two and three to get them on the agenda for the council to consider based on a large purchase you know short of an hr matter right and then we would expect feedback to your point through mr green okay here's unless you attended the meeting or watched it on youtube you wouldn't know any of that and right. to your point you know. you know. we're just lobbing these things over the fence with no expectation of what's going to be lobbed back right. and so i think we should be able to put something together as a recommendation back to council that would be an addendum to what they're presenting to us that's what they're doing here well, we could definitely provide them with an addendum to this um, are you saying that you want to recommend that they do not approve this in a week until that addendum is complete or do you want to add that addendum as soon as we generate it? the latter okay. then Green, do we want to add that to our January meeting? Would that be something that that would be be fine as it is? I think shall jump forward. Originally, we we're going to have one of the uh, system assessments presented to you in January. It looks like that's kind of falling apart right now. So uh, this might be a very good subject for your January January meeting. Okay. What would you uh, want from staff to? prep for that well I think if we had the wherewithal mr. green to look at other commissions and I just bring up McPherson although I I think McPherson and Gardner are apples and oranges and I, I don't want to get off on that rabbit hole but nonetheless I do feel like they're apples and oranges we could look at other like cities that have commissions or utility boards and understand what their What their line of communication is and what those expectations are in order to get recommendations to one body and have the feedback perhaps before a vote solidify it 
uh, i.e. more information or explanation or what have you? And what does that mechanism really look like? And by no means am I trying to make this more complicated than it is, but there's going to be other commission members up here five, ten years down the road, and perhaps this ordinance changes in that period of time as well, but nonetheless, there's just never been a partnership between this commission and the, and the council, correct? Yes. And so I want to try to create, on our behalf, some sort of conduit that's standardized, keep it simple, stupid, in order cr to create that partnership. I, I like the sentiment. I think it makes sense. I think what you're requesting and recommending is beneficial, useful. But I think from from looking at those other commissions, from all the all the stuff that happened a year ago, I think what you're going to find is that those documents don't exist in all those other places because. Let's take McPherson, for example. They have the GM right. who goes to the meeting and sits in the meeting and they just actively, he's in that role where he's back and forth vocally during the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they present a report on um, you know, uh, profit and loss kind of thing. Right. So I think most of it is implied that there will be good communication fact that there hasn't been is what's necessitating what well, you're asking yeah, for. Yeah, hence my recommendation. Um, but I think you won't find much for it, so we may be the one leading that charge, which is not a bad thing. Yeah, again, it's uh, not an overcomplicated request, and I we can keep it simple, and I think, you know, if we could get Lance up here, I think he could lend his expertise, you know, in this particular subject, but I just want to create some sort of conduit and I understand elections change council, I understand appointments change this commission, but at the end of the day, there has got to be, I mean, in, in my professional world, if my staff that answers to me indirectly wasn't communicating to me through a standardized means, I wouldn't know what's going on, and that's not healthy for the company, the profit, the safety, customers, employee satisfaction, et cetera. And here we said, and constituents, I don't know about the rest of you, but constituents call my house, call my phone, and ask me about this, that, and the other with respects to rates and so forth. Well, I can't honestly tell them, as an example, well, Mr. Moore, I appreciate your call, but I don't know how I'm going to get that information as a commission board member to council well, versus standing up front in the open mic night. I, again, I, I like the sentiment. I think what we're going to run into we're going to have to craft this very succinctly because what I think it's going to boil down to is you're going to we're going to write down and say when we provide a recommendation we'd like feedback within X. X, right? There's nothing that says that they have to care what our X is. I understand like, that. We're at their pleasure, so I understand. they could be like, we're not going to look at your recommendation ever. I understand. Right? So I think what's going to happen is. There's going to be pushback. I'm not saying we shouldn't try, but I think you're going to have pushback on whether or not council wants to have their hands bound in any document in any way that says we will respond in X amount of time or we will, you know what I mean? Well, if we don't try, we're not going to know. That's right. So, so we can. If we have consensus, we can pull something together, and to Dave, uh, Mr. Green's point, we can put that on the agenda and start a conversation, right, you know, in January, January, and we can bring some recommendations or what have you. Yeah, that'd be okay. I, and, and for Dave, I have two, two specific questions regarding the ordinance, um, and one is kind of under 3B, um, extension of services. Uh, there are actually two mentions of a cost-benefit analysis to be uh, submitted or, and prepared by this board or this commission. Um, and I'm wondering if there really needs to be two. Um, talks about as the city annexes, and annexes new areas to the city limits, the commission shall conduct a cost-benefit and feasibility analysis to assist the city council in rendering its determination of whether the city council should extend service into the newly annexed areas. 
And then uh, further down, uh, it talks about um, for specific economic purposes, economic development purposes, the city council may restrict areas to be served by a third party provider other than a city utility to assist the city council in rendering its determination. The, the commission shall prepare and submit to the city council a cost benefit and feasibility analysis of the service area or ser of service to the area. So it seems like that's redundant. Right, that, that's, that study really should be doing the same thing. Right, we'll do it once and they can make a determination from that first one. Right? <laughs> I think in two, you've got, you know, when you do annex by statute, you're supposed to do an analysis of what needs to be done. In our case, since there are other providers that could serve areas to be annexed, then that cost benefit balance, but it would be necessary for the utilities. Um, you may just find, yeah, it may just be redundant, and a lot of times these ordinances repeat themselves. I don't think they're looking for multiple studies. I think they're looking for one study, but they keep stating different things that need to be looked at. Right. I, I just don't. Uh, it seems like they could refer to the earlier cost benefit and feasibility analysis in that in that last sentence, that last step of three B. You know, that study's gonna gonna bring up an interesting yep. segue it, or point. It's kind of back to what we were just talking about because there's a good potential that doing one of those studies is going to require us to make a recommendation Correct. to city council to spend enough funds to get a consultant in to do said study, mm -hmm. which then comes back. So we're gonna make a recommendation even though we're bound to do this study, right? Shall do study. We're gonna have to make a recommendation to get the authority to do the study because we need the funds. Then that's gonna come back at some point in time then we're going to get the guy to come in. Then we're going to deal with the information that's presented. We're going to digest it, and then we're going to make another recommendation of what that study is. Well, see, that, that's not how I read this. This, I guess, I was assuming that this commission, this body, would actually do the study. No, the cost benefit. We can, we but can if it's something that's going to require more expertise outside of right. this commission, and most of them they do. I think. I think probably. The study would be presented to you for the analysis, and then you would you would basically vet it and right. decide if it makes sense or not. Right. Maybe this should be a little more specific and state that then. I think because <laughs> right now it says the commission shall conduct a cost benefit and feasibility analysis. That to me means the we will actually mean is action on our we will actually be physically doing this work. Well, so it says this is city council, so I'm assuming that they're going to send that down to us to get a recommendation once they've already done the study, and then just ask us to basically but check it over, yeah. like, like they said. Right. With that, back. I don't yeah. think there'll be a the two recommendation to get funding and all that stuff. See that clause in there, the to assist the city council in rendering its determination, is a reference to the conducting of the study by this commission. It doesn't say this commission will make a recommendation to commission a study. It says that we will do it. And so I think if this is not the intent of that, it should not say this. Well, let's ask for clarification. Then. Right. I think it's a good point. Well, and it also it says down here um, even further, it reinforces the commission shall conduct by saying the commission shall prepare and submit to the city council a cost benefit and feasibility analysis. Those, th I mean, those are verbs and uh, and pointing back to a subject, and this and we are the subject. So, uh, if that's not the intent of what this is supposed to say, then it needs to be clarified. Clarified, yeah. And you know, I think on the four corners of the page, you're right. Between the four corners of the page, I think the reality is you'll delegate to. Right. You'll delegate to your minions, go do this for us and bring it back. But right. But going further with that, though, we still want it to state in some way that I don't want it to be what Dwayne mentioned, where the city runs off with, hey, we found out that blah, 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 we did this study, here you go, 
take a look at it without any input as to what we should be looking for or hey we wanted to consider X this did you did you tell your consultant to look at that or hey how's that going to impact our budget right right I know that we're just going to recommend the budget again but all those things would have to come to us I would hope first rather than after the fact well, and I yeah. don't know if that's going to happen so we well, still want something in there that has meat that says that we are the ones that you know push this up to them right and that's where the that's where the language the Commission shall be responsible for making a recommendation comes into play that's our that's what we do mm -hmm. we make Fair recommendations right. we don't conduct uh, cost-benefit analysis because that's not what we do I mean I'm, I'm willing to do it I'm, I'm qualified to do a cost-benefit analysis but um, if that's not what what uh, what this is intending for me to do then obviously I don't want to do it well, and I think we need to clean up the burbage, and I think historically, that's not what we've seen. Historically, historically, to date, Mr. Green's point, the minions have brought it. The, the consultant has brought it to us. We've sliced and diced it, asked some key questions, projected, looked at costs, understood how that's going to affect rates, et cetera. And then we send it back out. He tidies it up, and then we send it up the uh, the flagpole. Well, historically, you didn't have. I, I understand. I'm being nice, Mark. Okay. Um, so I, I think the verbiage is a good catch, and I think we need to just ask for some clarification. But on the other hand, I want to remind us all of an earlier conversation just tonight in that, you know, you feel like you're not doing anything and this, that, and the other. I don't want to personally perform a cost-benefit analysis just from a, from a, uh, a fiduciary um, I just don't want to be exposed, okay? Because we're we're volunteers here, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. I, that, I agree. I'm okay. not, I'm Back not in October, I brought that up. I said, look, if we did something, we're not covered under what? Right. The C and I. Well, that, yeah, and that's that. Uh, this is basically my point. Yeah, this this ordinance orders us to do the do the actual work, and if that is not the intent, then it needs to be. It needs to be the, the intent. Actually, needs to be stated in the ordinance. The, the last, the last question I have on this um, is along the same lines. Um, in all of the other language, uh, our actions are to make recommendations, and the final um, action that we have responsibility for on this ordinance um, that's under uh, item 3G, it says we shall submit information um, and I'm wondering why would we submit red, red, um, information and not make a recommendation I think what they probably intended there was that it's to it's, it's more of instruction that we will provide more than just hey go do X here's our justification for X through mr. green to the council because the ordinance is somewhat of a here's here's how to do things while here's what you have to do and can't do and so on so I assume that's what the intention is it could be a little cleaner that well with recommendations we the reason that, it, that this is important to me is because it mentions specifically capital improvement projects and I would like for this board, uh, with the help of, of Mr. Green and or his replacement, <laughs> uh, to make the recommendation for the CIP for on behalf yeah. of the utility. Right. That, that, that's what I would like to see this commission do, and it's one of the I think it's one of the more important things that this commission will do. So I think this needs to be clarified, and it should say explicitly that we will make a recommendation on capital improvement projects. Well, then again, in verbiage, the commission shall recommend to the city council, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Would that be what you're looking for? Yes. It, I don't want to. I don't want the commission to be um, submitting information. I want the commission to be making recommendations, mm -hmm. what, which is consistent with the rest of the, the duties of this commission as it's written here in this ordinance. Well, I, I would kind of take that as we, we shall submit if if they ask for a recommendation if 
they ask for information. So it would come down to us and then ask for it too. These seem like this is a city council. They're, they're proposing these long range, not proposing them, but they're getting those projects going and then asking us for more information about and basically requiring us to respond back with the recommendation or information that we can come up with. I, I don't think they're, they may be expecting us to be putting a, putting together projects and what we think should be happening, but I got a feeling it's no, I, I think back the other way we're responding the, to Right, the way I think it should work is the utility director brings to us his vision, what he thinks the utilities need, we analyze and we form a recommendation and it, this is our recommendation for the capital improvement plan um, and we, we present that to the council or we have the electric director. Yeah, and I think it's more than just the CIP. Proposed long range power and water supply arrangements. Yes. So Mr. Green or whoever else is before us, basically we're going to support him yes. or guide him. I, I, I don't think that we want to put ourselves in a position that the city council tells us because no. the last six months of meetings that I've attended, gentlemen, <laughs> I haven't seen anything about energy or water or wastewater unless it's a reactive purchase. Right. right. So if we're able to get on the agenda, which in my opinion we should be on every agenda, through those recommendations so that he can, Mr. Green as an example, can bring those recommendations bring that item to, to Mr. Moore's point and say XYZ, we dissect it through the course of an hour, hour and a half. Obviously we've done our due diligence before we walk in here, we're, you know, whether it's a special meeting or a standard monthly meeting. And he says, aha, I didn't think of X or Y or apples and oranges. He updates it and now he's more prepared. He has you know, a team behind him basically and goes about his business and has the input from the operators over here to our right. Well, and all that culminates to a, a great agenda item for council to vote on as we see with the planning commission. Very little times do the, does the planning commission recommendations create a lot of extra chatter on city council. Well, there's a reason for that though. I understand, but keeping the well, who out of it. No, 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 I mean, what. the reason for that is because most of the time the planning commission they're recommendation is not going to bind them to millions of dollars of Correct, expense. and they're also working within a parameter as set by, right. you know, the the authorities of which dictate the facades of commercial buildings right. and plants and all that good stuff. But that's where I, you know, I, I get Mr. Moore's point, but I think there's more to that item than just the CIP, you know, capital improvements, the long range, it goes back to what I said, you know, we've got to forecast and be proactive. So if we just change the word submit to recommendation, I think we would. That's all I was asking yeah. for. Well, and I think, you know, maybe it ends up in our document, but ideally the utility director one day to be filled should be the most prepared for every council meeting out of all the directors. The reason being, he gets to sit with all the other staff members and get the same information from the city administrator and from the people on the ground telling him everything he needs to know. Yep. But then he gets the ability to come to this group, get additional feedback, additional eyes, history, so on and so forth, so that all the information that he wanted to present is already vetted. Then it goes to council. If you take any recommendation from tonight, it's that that's the flow of information. Electric director acquires from city, city admin, city council pushing back to city admin, brings it to us, we vet it, we push it on up. But I don't want it to be city council says we're going to do X, Y, Z. Then it goes to the director. Then it comes to us and it's an afterthought byproduct. Hey, will you give us your rubber stamp? Or will you review it? Right. Will you review it after the fact? Right. We need to be proactive. That director needs to be coming to us. Right. We need to be getting to the forefront. In other words, a decision that would be normally scheduled for pick a month, May for the council. Well, we need to be talking about it in March. 
which means the information that the city is going to present to their directors in April needs to come to us in February. Right. You know, through that electric director. In other words, the city has to be aware that there's a little bit more of a timetable in there. They're going to have to be proactive on getting information out. It goes right back to what I said earlier. That, that makes conduit. Sense. That makes sense. So I think yeah. on large issues that probably would look fine, you are going to have issues that come up. Right. But I think what you guys are, what I, would, I would imagine what you're talking about is this, these are the major issues. These are the play in the global issues. Right. What's the policy and the direction? Day-to-day right. -day stuff, electric director, utility director is going to run with that anyway. You bet. And, and if, if it's outside his or her spending authority or expertise, it's going to go on to the admin anyway. Right. So, and it's not like we couldn't have a special meeting call. Right. But, yeah, this is more for those big ticket items. I mean, that's sure. what we're here for. We're supposed to be 10,000 foot. Does that make sense from a business standpoint? Yes. Or why in the world would we do that when we could do that? And that's, that's exactly why I want the, the language in this last bullet or this last um, section changed to reflect a recommendation and not um, supplying information because any anyone in the organization can supply information or submit information. Um, our function, you know, that are the commission's function should be to digest information and make recommendations to the city council. That's at least that's what I read in the, in the rest of this. I agree. So yeah, you're wanting so information change to recommendations? Yeah. Is that, uh, that simple, yeah. Yep. <laughs> How would you like just this, the commission yeah, shall submit to recommendations to the city council concerning. So basically submit recommendations. Yes. To the council. So basically recommendation goes after submit and information is struck. Yep. Okay. And, the, and, and the bottom line for the first one that I talked about is, is very simply um, I don't want uh, clear. I don't want to be. I, I don't want the explanation of why it reads what it reads. I want it clarified in the language within the ordinance what it is that this commission is expected to do with regard to cost benefit analyses and feasibility studies. And if that is, you know, make a recommendation to the council to hire, or if it's hire a, a, a you know a contractor to come in and do this or and, you know oversee that or whatever that is that needs to state that explicitly in this ordinance okay good discussion okay then i got one thing good good, good discussion thus far uh to d all members must be customers of the city's utilities well that's that's a carryover from the electric yeah because we're all uh, utility users of the electric but I'm wondering if it should state it like that because now that means a member on this commission would have to be a user of water wastewater and electricity so somebody who's being served by KCP and L but getting city water is now excluded from providing guidance on this commission or vice versa right I mean there's there's people, you know, just down Center Street that are still on KCPL, right? Mm -hmm. Right? But they're definitely getting water from the city, or maybe you're getting electricity. I have, I have to see the maps again. See if there's anybody getting electricity that's out on rural water seven. Possibility. There's a possibility. So, I'm wondering if we want to say is a is a customer of a city utility. Or do we want to force it to be, you've got to be a member of all city utilities? I would say A, because I don't think we want to. Right, I think, again, yeah. we're at a 10,000 foot view, right? right. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with Randy. I, I, I agree with Bruce. Uh, any of the city utilities would be fine with me. I think it should be all. And then if they're going to be making decisions and stuff on all the it's covering all of them. It's not just it is kind of a one. It is it does seem like kind of a corner case that somebody would apply that only is an electric customer or only a water and wastewater customer or well right, but there's never been the ability 
didn't worry about it before. It was always just you were an electric. It, nobody asked. But right. So and 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 can we really, from what it says here, can we really uh, say? I mean, can it really be interpreted to mean that they have to be? And it says customers of the city's utilities. Um, I think it can. I think it can be interpreted any 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 way you want there. Yeah, it, it's it's a. Yeah. That's why I brought it up. Because I thought we should help provide the guidance as to what the best would be since this is our commission. Yeah. I think it's making an assumption that there are minimum goals. I, yeah, I think it, we, I think somebody, if somebody showed up and wanted to be on the board that was only an electric customer, I think. I mean, if you kept your might status have quo, yeah, they would only have to be electric right now. We might now. have to cross that bridge when we get to it if, if we left it as is. Well, why not provide a recommendation now or cross the bridge sooner than later? Based on, based I, on I, I guess I, just don't, I, I, I think I kind of agree with, with Dwayne a little bit. Um, it, well, just based on the fact that it's going to probably be a very rare case that we see somebody raise their hand and step forward and want to do this. That's, that's only a, you know, that's not an all of, you know, all of the above customer. Okay, but forget about whether or not it's frequent or rare. From a policy standpoint, does right. it make sense that you have to be a member or a customer of all the utilities? Or no, you can do this job with just being a yeah. customer for, of a single utility. For, for, for me personally, I don't. I, that really doesn't matter. I, I think as long as you're a customer of a, a utility, you're in there. But okay. Uh, but I don't know that this says. I don't. I don't know that this. Before we discuss that, let me go one step further with that. If it's a utility, if you keep everything status quo, currently it would at least be the electric, right? Not just a water user. And, and water's going to be wastewater too, but because right now the board is all electric, right? right? We all are electric customers. So if if you're saying it's okay to be a does the A have to be electric, or can it be one? I, I guess I just don't have a, a very strong opinion on it, one way or the other. Dwayne, you still thinking I, I, all three? Well, yeah, I think, you know, to, for clarification, it's just say all or A, just to clarify it for going forward. I mean, the mayor's going to make a recommendation, and he's going to be able to see whether they're actually a customer. But I, I think for clarification, it certainly would not hurt to be having A or an all, whichever they felt was. How about B and or? No, not B and no, I'm serious. Well, either you're you're one or the other, so you're and or. Well, it's or you're the same both. as A. You're not doing B, so A is. That's fair. So okay. that's B. So what I'm gathering though is it needs clarified, but it sounds like it's 50-50 as to whether or not it should be all or any. I would be okay either way. So if, if Dwayne wants it, that they have to be all, I'm fine with that. <laughs> Perhaps we just, I mean, if we just make a recommendation for them to clarify that statement with what they actually mean. Uh, I don't know, it's up to us to decide. Well, I'm just saying that it would, it might be nice if we give them that record it's, it's, it's our board exactly right yeah. you know rather than just hey fix it yeah i'm probably in it and, and they don't care if it's if it's all or nothing or i mean all or or one i i, I really don't have a strong opinion i think they're going to have if it's an electric cu customer or a water customer i think they, they're eligible as long as you meet the other requirements Randy? I haven't moved. Okay, the, the argument you can make for that though is you know, we have a, an apartment building where they don't take the water. 